Well, for those who live in rural areas across the country, depending on volunteers to protect you and your property from a fire is reality. And many of these volunteer firefighters do it without any compensation. But what would happen if you called for help and no one showed up? KPLC's Candy Rodriguez takes us into a closer look into the importance and need for volunteer firefighters in this special report. Along the Gulf Coast in southwest Louisiana, you'll come upon Cameron Parish. There you'll find the community of Grand Lake. Dinah Landry is a part of the Cameron Parish, Grand Lake, and Sweet Lake Fire Protection District Number 14. We moved into the community and we decided that we might be needed in this area, and sure enough, we were. And if you drive past the station, you'll see this sign, calling for volunteers. Well, we're down on our numbers now. We have about eight, that's, that's pretty steady. We have four that come and go, and we have some people that want to be trained but just haven't got to it yet, and we are desperately in need of additional firemen. A small number of firefighters for the amount of square miles they have to cover. We cover about 90, 98 square miles, something like that. But since the hurricanes, everybody's moved up this general direction, so we've got 3,600 people we're looking at. So, you know, we have an awful lot of construction here. We have a lot of new houses. We have a lot of buildings to cover. We need help. So I took a ride along with Ricky Falk, former chief and current training officer at the department. Falk is now retired and dedicates his time to the fire station. I've been a volunteer for 30 years. He joined in 1986, knowing that as a volunteer firefighter, he wouldn't be getting paid. So I wanted to know why he does it. It's every time I know people have, have been asked this question, you know, why would you want to be a volunteer firefighter? And I think about it every time I see a little child. I said, they could need help. And uh, if there's nobody to help them, I said, that's what we come in at. I said, maybe it's for the children I do it. Maybe not. I just, I, I didn't really have a reason when I joined up. Uh, it was one of them things where I said, well, I said, I'll try and see how far I go. And I'm still here. Bog showed me several homes that fall under the department's jurisdiction. All this. Most of this has been within the last 10, 12, 15 years. And Landry says people may not realize the importance of having the extra manpower. Fire department controls the, the fire rating and the fire rating helps you with your insurance. If you're paying high insurance, maybe it's because we don't have enough volunteers to make the fire rating get better. So it really helps all the parish. It helps everybody. It helps your neighbors and it also helps you when you volunteer. Cameron Parish is not alone in its need for manpower. Who's washing the truck? <laughs> uh, Jonah's washing Jonah's the truck. Washing the truck. A lot of emotions all at one time being a volunteer in a rural area. You never know what you're going to go to. Jeff Davis, Fire Department District Number 5, Fire Chief Jamie Hatfield, deals with the same issue. I think right now we have 16 firefighters, a total of 23 with our support staff. He says it's difficult to recruit. They don't have time. That's what they tell us, is they don't have time between family and work, and then whenever they're not working, they want to go recreate, whatever they do, hunt fish. So they don't have the time to come to the trainings, and they're afraid that if they join, that they'll be obligated to go to every call, which we're not obligated to go to every call. I mean, if you're working or you're doing something, it's... It is what it is. I mean, the volunteer firefighters range from all ages, including John Sonye, who started as a junior firefighter at the age of 16 and is now 19. It makes you feel good because it's help out the family that uh, potentially could have lost everything, but with us being there, it kind of helps salvage uh, some of their uh, property. District number five firefighters cover 125 square miles in the northwestern part of the parish. And Hatfield says his department has seen an increase in the total number of runs, which he believes has to do with the increase of people moving into the area. And they don't just fight fires. Volunteer firefighters across the area also respond to other calls. They usually page out the fire department for everything. Search and rescue, any kind of uh, uh, extrication on wrecks, 
we, we run BLS with basic life support. So any kind of medical call, we're going to be there first. And depending on how big a fire is, he says volunteer firefighter departments like his depend on mutual aid from surrounding departments to get the job done. One of District 5's aides is over in Allen Parish, led by Fire Chief Blake Lafargue. We protect about 100 square miles uh, from Highway 99 uh, on the uh, west east side of our district and then also to the Par uh, Calcasieu River on the west side up to the... Uh, Allen Correctional Center on the north and down to Paris Line Road on the south. Lafargue says his volunteer team consists of around 25 firefighters and they are always looking for more. Could benefit from 40 to 50 volunteers. So we, we, we could grow quite a bit. Uh, and we, we have the equipment and the availability to do that. Um, we just need the people. At just 21, the young chief started his firefighting career in high school. My, my sophomore year, um, which was, so it's been about seven years since I, I've been here. But for Lafargue, fighting fire has always been a family affair. My grandfather was a fire chief for 45 years, and so I was kind of always around it. And today, Lafargue and his wife fight fire together. She does get out there, yeah. And she started coming around and sparked an interest in it as well, so she's, uh, She's been with it ever since, and she loves it. And as Calcasieu Parish Ward 6 Fire Department Chief Tim Galland explains, volunteers are a lot more valuable than you might think. What America, I guess, doesn't realize is, or think about, maybe takes for granted, is the emergency services that are, that are here. Um, and they don't realize that their fire protection predominantly a 70 to 80 percent of the fire protection across the United States is by volunteers. And if we don't have volunteers, we don't have fire protection. Gallant has been the chief for almost two decades, and his department covers 125 square miles with about 25 volunteers. With the uh, industrial growth, our district is seeing growth. Um, we're seeing a lot of new subdivisions going into our district. And that creates a, you know, that, that stress on us of can we supply that fire service? And yes, we can and we will, but it's very difficult doing it with a 25 member. In order to be a volunteer firefighter, it takes dedication and a lot of training. It takes a special person to do it because you, you're coming out on your day off to train. You're getting off of work in the afternoon and going to training. You're getting up at two o'clock in the morning for a structure alarm and have to be at work at seven o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning. You know, so you, where's your night's sleep went? Uh, so it takes special people that are willing to, to make those kinds of sacrifices. But as one of his dedicated volunteers, Deanna Garrett says, it's all worth it in the end. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't do it for the kudos. We don't do it for the pat on the back. We don't do it for the thank yous, for the money. We don't do it for any of those things. Those of us that are here and dedicated to this, we do it so that we can help people, help our communities, you know, help, help our fellow firefighters, help everyone that we can. And, and this is how we do it. This is how one person can make a difference. At your service in Southwest Louisiana, Candy Rodriguez, KPLC 7 News. If you'd like to become a volunteer firefighter or learn more about it, you can contact your local fire department.